Welcome back everyone. Here we are on another summer school video. You guys seem to like it, so let's make some more. This is going to be the video where I look over to the summer school Reddit and I see if there's any questions that I can answer and help give you guys the answer because maybe A, it's your post or B, you had the same question. You didn't really know how to ask it until someone asked it for you. But enough chitter chatter. Let's hop on in and answer some of these questions. <laughs> As I always say, if you guys are new, hello. If you don't know who I am, my name is Coach Blaker. I've been professionally coaching for going on 10 years, diamond in all roles, diamond to peak. If you guys are interested in coaching, check out that site, coachblaker.com. I can't say it enough. If you guys are really struggling with the gameplay, you can know you deserve better. If you know you're trapped in the ELO, you don't belong, I highly recommend check out that coachblaker.com. A lot of players don't realize how much easier League of Legends becomes after you have someone help you out. Again, coachblaker.com. All right, the first post is called Top Lane Ganks. I don't know what that means, but top laners, I feel you don't get a lot of love even though your role is freaking OP. Let's take a look and see if we can answer this question here. I have this issue that whenever I play top lane, I don't really get ganked, which is fine because I don't really need them. But when I do get ganks, I'm not sure if I should follow my jungler. What I mean is, let's say the wave is pushing me and my jungler decides to gank, I'm always hesitant to leave the wave, but I also feel like it would be good to follow. So my question is, should I sacrifice my wave to follow a gank or should I just let my jungler attempt a gank and sort my wave out? Plat. I'm only adding that due to the character requirement. I'm gonna say we need some more periods in this because this is a long sentence, basically. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm not a grammar Nazi. I'm just saying that we need some pauses. Basically what's going on here is that they're, they're saying, you know, the wave is probably freeze towards their tower and, or, or towards like, you know, the personal tower or in front of it and the jungler comes to gank. They're gonna have to leave the wave to go assist with that gank. Should they do that or should they not? So if you're freezing it and you're doing your thing, you know, don't go because you're freezing your wave. You're, you're chilling, you know, you're making sure that it happens to CS is more important. But if there's a lot of minions and they're going for a gank, you probably are gonna die because it's called minion advantage. So the best way to know if you should go for a gank is if you call for one. If you don't call for the gank and you are doing your thing, ping them back. If you do call for a gank, go for it. That, 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 that's a good answer for you. If, if you want the gank, go for it. If you don't, ping them back. I think that's solid. So this one looked interesting. I became bad once I play more often. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break up each paragraph and I'm gonna give my input on each paragraph. That way you're not listening to a long monologue of this person, okay? If I play every once in a while, I do decently okay. I don't feed too much. I show up for objectives that my team is ready for. I help junglers with skirmishes uh, if I can, etc. But if I play frequently, I get worse and worse, even if I'm not raging or tilting. I don't understand it. It's especially apparent when I try a new champ with the most recent example being Bard. So that is something where if you play continuously every single day, as humans, period, we get drained. And so the more and more we play, the less of a charge we have going into the rest of the day. So if you play two to three games, you're gonna be probably at peak a lot more than someone who plays about eight or nine. Not saying you, don't, you can't perform well by the time you hit eight or nine, but you are degrading your performance slowly the more and more you play. So that could be why this person is experiencing that. And if you are doing the same thing, that could be why you're experiencing that as well. The best thing you could do is just play a couple of ranked games a day. I myself don't do that. I play continuously, I'm crazy. But if you want to have optimal results, two to three games of ranked a day will have you climb it. It's just slower because you don't play as much. Uh, let's, let's, let's move on though. I recently tried him out and found that he was fun and a big change of pace from the other supports I usually play. So I played him some more, in normals of course. I had played around eight matches on him uh, over the course of two days and had a 55 to 60 ish percent win rate on him. The next day I played him again and I played significantly worse than I had and got on a four loss streak. Sure, I could blame the golden rule and that it was just unlucky with my teammates not following up or listening to calls, but I know I just played bad. My macro decisions were all over the place and my micro plays never seemed to connect and I have no idea why I played worse. So when you're playing a new champion, there's this little thing that happens, and I don't know why it happens, but it happens more often than not, where I think it's part of your, your mental, first of all. When you're playing something fresh and new, it feels really good because you're not used to the environment, so to speak, right? You play like 100, 200 games of your favorite champion. Oh, I'm getting kind of dull. You go to a new champion. It's like, oh, it feels great. And so you're happy. You're energized. You're ready. And you perform better. Why? Because it's not so much as trying to improve, it's so much as trying to have fun. It's so much as really getting that experience of that new champion. 
What happens after you consistently play over and over, you start to fall right back into that realm of I need to improve to actually win my games, not the I just win off of spontaneous uh, emotions, right? Because League of Legends, whether it's ranked or normals, it consistently, I mean, it rewards consistency. It rewards you playing well all the time. It doesn't reward you playing well sometimes or else you're gonna start losing, right? So it rewards you playing consistently. And so when you start having that burst of that good mental, you know, everything seems to be okay. And mental plays a huge part in League of Legends. If you have a really good mental, you're starting to win more games just off the fact that you're always happy. And so that's what happens with the champion. Um, at least that's my theory. Happens with everybody, happens with me, happens with, like I said, just, it, it happens a lot, and people just don't realize it. So I think that's what's happening. You know, the the fact that you're having something new and fresh makes you feel a lot better, which means when you're playing League, you're performing a lot better. But once it becomes stale, or once it becomes something that is more of, I have to learn, I have to get better, you start to actually fall back into the same notion of, well, I have to improve myself, rather than, you know, just me being happy and not really paying attention to the bad things that I'm doing. This is a phenomenon that I've seen with every champ I play. I want to play more because when I have fun, I don't tilt. And if I do tilt, I stop playing for a bit. I'm just frustrated trying to play this game and seeing negative results from your efforts. And it's honestly made me play this game much less than I used to. One of the main reasons why this type of stuff happens is because, as I just said, you know, you stop playing or you stop wanting to see the negative results, period we don't like doing things and seeing negative results, which is weird because that's what ranked is full of all the time. It's full of players doing things, seeing negative results and not going anywhere. This is where I say coaching is huge. It's a really big asset, whether it's for me or someone else, coachblaker.com, but whether it's for me or someone else, it, it, it makes it so this doesn't happen, right? The, the pain and the frustration that you have to feel to figure out why you're doing something to make posts like these, to ask other people, maybe to go with other discords and just say, well, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. And just all over the place stress. That's what coaching solves. You don't have to do that because that's my job. You know, that's where I come in, look at the play, be like, what's going on and specifically tell you what's going on. You fix that. You then move on and you enjoy your life. You, you're happy and stuff like that. That's what coaching is for. Right. And so these type of feelings that you even might feel when you're playing the game yourself and you're in the same situation where I don't know what's happening. I don't know what to do. It's never going to go away until you actually improve on it. And the way you improve on it is by figuring it out. And the way you figure it out is by having someone tell you. Or you could just try to go through guides and videos, but usually it doesn't work. So again, this is something where if you really are at to this point where you just hate it and it's, and it's making you not want to play and you're really not enjoying League of Legends, get a coach. It's that simple. You're just going to start enjoying League. You're going to start having fun because you're going to realize how much impact you have in your games. You're going to realize how much you don't really need your team, so to speak. You're going to realize how much it is, to, or how much easier it is to win. I, I just, this is just something that I didn't mean to go on a tangent, but this is just something that I see a lot, and it's just kind of weird how people just sit and, and stew in their own juices instead of just actually reaching out for help. I'm really wondering what could be the cause of this and what I could do about it. Should I just stick to playing not often to counteract it, even though I want to play more? How do I keep up the consistency I do have in the first few decent games I play? So again, this is just the fact that you feel really good playing a new champion. As far as being consistent with it, it's hard because it's a champ you don't play. There's no such thing as being consistent when you don't even know what you're really doing, right? And so when you don't know what you're doing, it's a lot easier to feel like, I guess, I don't, I don't really know how to really put this because we all think differently. But when you don't really, when you're, ignorance is bliss, best thing I can say. When you don't really know what's happening, you feel a lot better. When you actually see what's happening and understand what's happening, you feel a lot worse. After your first few matches, you don't really know what you're doing, you don't really know what you're playing, you're just really focused on playing the champion and having fun. You don't really notice what you're actually doing. But once it becomes, again, once you're used to that, once it becomes, I, I don't really want to say stale, um, but once it becomes uh, something that's kind of second nature to you, I guess, so to speak, when you're playing it more and more and more, you start to get a feel for it, you start to understand it more, then that kind of ignorant wall breaks down and you really start seeing the rest of the game for what it is. So the consistency will just never be there, but the thing you're falling back into is how you usually play. That is the consistency that you're doing so until you improve how you always play you're never really going to be consistent and you can't improve how you always play if you're constantly swapping champions so that's the way that you would go about that again though i mean getting a coach just solves all this like that so it's kind of that
All right, the last one here is something is wrong with this game. I, <laughs> I want to see what's going on here. So, yes, yes, it's that thing. You know that thing everybody hates or is defending right now? Tank items, dude. What is this inting scion strategy? You run it down and eventually if your team defends because half people have to go to defend, you'll win just because you can survive long enough to destroy turrets. Tank scion's been a thing. Uh, that doesn't work in high level that often, specifically because players know how to deal with it. And so, in turn, the best thing that you do with the Scion that's inting like that and running it down is you deal with him first, then you go deal with everybody else. It's the same way you deal with all split pushing strategies. You deal with them first, then you deal with everybody else. If you're going to have to lose a dragon because you have to deal with that Scion, it sucks, but it, it is what it is. You want to try to stem the bleeding. The more and more you kill that guy, the more and more he's dead, the more and more he's dead, the less experience and gold he's collecting. Eventually, that's going to snowball for about three to four minutes, five minutes. If he continues to do that, it is going to get to a point where he's very, very weak. And even though he's going to be hitting towers, you guys should be able to send one um, or, or two. You know, not going to send as many to deal with them because he's dead all the time. The issue with this is that because he, he, he ends up getting away and goes back, getting away and goes back, just like any other split pusher, they gain a lot more experience and a lot more gold for doing so. So that is how you do it with the Inting Stein. Continue. Seriously, though, this just happened to me. And the fact that he survived long enough to end the game tanking one Nexus turret and the Nexus with against five of us attacking him at once says something again it's happened before and he's not the only champion that does it i was playing kane there's no excuse if you're playing kane <laughs> i was playing kane red kane and two of my items were shireldia's as well as black cleaver this should take his armor down a notch but dude but no dude he was 114 i literally could not 1v1 him or 1v2 gonna assume that we're not ahead when you're playing kane you need to be ahead if you're not ahead that champ sucks period in the discussion. So I'm gonna assume you were not ahead or you were ahead and the game just took too long and again, he d decided to get stronger. Kane isn't very much late game focused. Also, uh, you know, you're playing Kane. That, that's not even, that should never be a question. Kane should be able to deal with that champ like that. Uh, possibly we could have won if the Jin didn't build Gale and then rapid fire cannon, but he had no MR, and so 25 full build Nico did no damage to him. Huh? What? This game is being serious right now. Our team's total was 50, 34, 64 enemies, was 34, 50, 48. What, was it the ADC's fault, or did we have no counterplay? Again, I'm going to say because the Kane was probably ahead at first and then got behind and the way that we handled the situation. I'm going to scroll down to see if there is an OP.GG I can look at, but I'm going to assume there is not because players that usually tend to rage and complain like this do not like posting their OP.GG because they know they're probably going to be in the wrong of the whole situation. I'm not saying this person is wrong. I'm not saying this person is bad, but I am saying these are the possible factors. A, we got ahead and we lost early. B, we allowed this guy to continue to split push and gain experience in gold, and we never stopped him until it was too late. C, we were behind, and we never could do anything in the first place. D, there's no D. You're playing King. I think if we lose this King, we just, it's its time to see Coach Blicker at CoachBlicker.com. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I can't stress it enough. If you guys are having trouble in your games, if you guys feel like you can't control your games, if you guys are unhappy, if you guys are not having fun, I highly recommend booking a coaching session. It makes a world of difference in your play and it definitely speeds up the process of improving. If you're not really wanting to improve and you just kind of play to play, it is what it is. But for those of you really trying to improve, and as that other post said, you see negative results from your play, and it really frustrates you that you are not playing optimal. It really frustrates you that you know you deserve better, you know you deserve to climb, you know you deserve a different rank, but you're still stuck there, you're still having issues. Book a session at coachbaker.com. Sometimes all it takes is a couple of minutes to say, this is what you need to do. You get right on it, and you're just, you're climbing like nothing. So I, again, check out my site, coachbaker.com. Thank you guys for watching. Peace, peace. Late, late. Have a good rest of your day or night. And thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach.